Hi guys, my name is Dr. Mark. I was a lot of questions about uh, ortho extrusion uh, on my uh, latest, latest case and dental clinical pearls. And uh, as I promised, I, would, um, I want to record the video about this case. Uh, ortho extrusion, of course, there is a lot of indications and contraindications. So the indication would be if uh, in this particular case, when the cavity went below the bone crest, and uh, there is no way to restore this tooth successfully and you have enough length of the root you can pull this tooth out uh, with ortho extrusion or partial uh, extraction technique um, <clears throat> and um, to get uh, enough feral effect to restore this tooth structure but you have to also keep in mind so how much tooth structure the length of the roots left you need at least nine millimeters left of the root structure in order to proceed with this technique. Otherwise, the crown root ratio is going to be unfavorable. We also have to understand that uh, the more uh, this tooth will go down, the more tapered the root is. Okay, I mean it's closer uh, to the nerve, and how much tooth structure would be left after the crown prep. So you also have to keep in mind it's uh, what type of uh, restoration you would like the plaque to restore. Is it enough to structure um, to, to place the ferrule and also uh, um, to keep the tooth structure uh, healthy. The second part is uh, we also have to keep in mind it's if, for example, we don't have enough uh, facial bone, uh, special anterior, anterior areas, uh, when we have the fracture below the gum level. The ortho extrusion would be great um, to regain uh, that facial bone uh, and then after the uh, extraction of course we expecting some um, losing the bone is, uh, on the facial but will compensate with ortho extrusion. At the same time if you have something in the proximal bone um, uh, reduction it's, uh, or you lost the bone due to re uh, any reasons there also can be uh, or the extrusion just to regain enough uh, um, interproximal bone uh, for the following uh, uh, implant placement. So, what's the contraindication um, in the or the extrusion? One of them is uh, if uh, the teeth are palatally or buccally uh, placed um, and uh, just pushing this tooth down, so it will more and more buccally misplaced. Uh, the facial bone, so there's going to be a contraindication for that uh, for that ortho extrusion. Again, it's, that's a lot of lecture. I'm not going to give a lecture here. Um, usually, this case is uh, will be probably discuss when you um, study biological width, uh, you know the anatomy and histology, and then will be much easier to understand all the cases related uh, to this technique. So this particular patient came to my office on emergency basis. And of course, you can see it's a root canal pain. And the cavity went below the bone crest. Uh, fortunately, I don't have a bite wing. I know people asking the bite wing, preoperative bite wing. I don't have it. Sorry for that. Um, but as uh, in the regular office, we discussed um, different techniques, uh, different treatment plans uh, to save a tooth, uh, not to save a tooth. Uh, give you the option of also placing the implant. Uh, so the patient uh, came and, and agreed to place the implant. It would be scheduled him on the next time. So when he came on a day of uh, implant placement, implant surgery, uh, he decided with his wife that he wants to do with another option we gave him its ortho extrusion. Um, so at that particular uh, case, what we done in the first appointment is um, we, we did the root canal, as you can see here, and also uh, excavate the cavities, seal the uh, distal box, so make sure it's uh, the hypochlorite solution, the oil irrigation is co uh, contained. So that was the first appointment, and in the first appointment I placed uh, the power, um, power chain with the metal or, or the wire uh, on, on the buckle. So, and uh, people ask it, so when did I place the post? I place the post the next time. So make sure there is no pain, there is no discomfort on, on the tooth structure. And then uh, the next time we already put the post 
and it be the, for the build up. So, as you can see um, over here, that's um, the metal wire being placed on the buckle side. You can you can place any uh, rigid uh, metal wire. Uh, some people are suggesting put a um, post uh, material on the buckle. Uh, you can do that, um, but also you have to keep in mind it uh, depends on the location of your tooth and what do you uh, want to accomplish, what you want to regain. That's uh, going to be a different position of this metal wire, as you can see here. So mine was on more of a buckle because I want to make sure it's have more of the buckle ball going down. So some uh, sometimes you can place this wire in the middle okay between those two teeth and uh, uh, probably and extrude this uh, vertically uh, sometimes you can place this on both sides okay on the buckle in the lingual side to uh, expedite this uh, orta extrusion again different techniques different varieties and especially if you do um, a cosmetic case and the front teeth nobody wants to wear it. it's, uh, this uh, metal wire at the front what you can do is, uh, especially if it's, for example, if it's central incisor, you can place this wire uh, where the, the root uh, projection is, place the post, place the post with the hook, okay, and attach this uh, power chain into the hook uh, so to pull these two structures straight, okay. And on the facial side, you can place uh, uh, temporary material uh, like a shell uh, so the vision where it's a, a, a temporary is a cosmetic re for cosmetic reasons and at the same time you do a orta extrusion. The question was um, what, how much, uh, how long I've been uh, using this power chain, how long it took me to, uh, to do the extrusion. Depends what your goal is. For example, if I want to just um, get the feral effect and I don't need the bone to follow, in a particular case, you can put more pressure on the tooth structure so it can ex extrude faster, faster, and then uh, uh, you're going to have enough feral effect to do the procedure. If you want to regain the bone, you probably want to do it slowly, so the bone and the tooth structure will go probably with the same rate. It's very difficult because yeah, the tooth structure has to go first, the bone. Uh, remodels it's not so fast that's why at the end of the procedure when you're done the extrusion you have to keep a tooth structure a little bit three four months uh, for stability and to reestablish biological width back again to normal so um, in this particular case it took me three four weeks um, to gain this uh, to extrude this tooth structure to regain its uh, feral effect and then I put this uh, uh, wired itself for four months and waited four months until the, the bone and the tissue um, grew back again it's, uh, to establish biological width and then I started doing um, a, a crown lensing procedure. So they also you have to uh, do a uh, fibroectomy uh, it's usually suggested once uh, every one, uh, one week or two weeks in this particular case, I didn't do this. I don't want a patient bring every one or two weeks to uh, give injection to the surgery. So I decided to do crown lensing at the end. And that's what I done. It's a fibroectomy and the crown lensing at the same time. So the wire that uh, you, uh, there's people asking what type of wire you're using. It uh, was 3M company. You can use round wire. And uh, the thickness of your uh, that would be 0 0.030 Anchorage uh, 3M Unitech and when you stabilize when you stabilize this for 4 months you can probably want to use rectangle so for more stability and the number is, would be um, 0 0.018 by uh, 0 0.025 the power chain you can use uh, from 3M Unitech okay, and you can use it and to reactivate. So uh, this is from occlusal view and you can see from the buckle view. You can use uh, the bottom from uh, any uh, Invisalign or any Orta kit or you can use uh, any uh, uh, composites in, in your 
uh, a session. It's um, just to create this uh, little bit rectangular uh, button, okay, on your own. That's uh, so I can have retention. Uh, and where you're going to place this? That depends how much you need to extrude. So if I need three millimeters, I would probably get from the center three millimeters high and put a power chain. So I know how much I would probably push this tooth down. But while you're doing this, you reactivated this chain every week or every two weeks. Um, you have to file the occlusion down uh, up in this particular case just to regain the space uh, to extrude. Okay, hopefully it's uh, understandable um, what I just explained. Um, the next procedure when we're done, you can see um, the post has been placed, the crown lens can be done, and you see the distal already at the gingival level. I put the cord to, um, to expose the margin, and uh, the crown lens has been done, as you can see here. So the, the loose was prepped, and I've been scanned with uh, Steric. Uh, I think that particular time I maybe I use Omnicam, okay, and uh, we designed in the office a crown you can see here on the day of insertion. Uh, I've been using I think it's Emacs A3LT at that particular time, um, and you can see of day of insertion. So um, the tissue of course going to heal if you have enough like a three millimeters on the buccal wall um, biological width. And as you can see here, that's a distal wall is already above um, the bone crest, and it's cemented on the day of insertion. And um, this is a three years follow up, okay. And uh, now this case is up to eight years in the patient's mouth. People asking, it's uh, why didn't I do uh, the whole mouth to, uh, to fix the cross bite? Again, the patient came on an emergency basis, um, and that's what we did for him. Um, that's uh, number three uh, MO filling been done uh, to fill the cavity. Again, uh, this patient is not uh, the patient who regularly visit dentist. Uh, came in emergency, wants to save the tooth, and that's what uh, the follow up appointments. So uh, hopefully, uh, if you have, uh, you understand it's so the step by step. If you have any questions, you can probably send me email on markgregorydds at yahoo.com. I have a lot of uh, videos on the biological with other procedures. You can probably follow me on a YouTube, uh, just uh, type a Gregory Mark uh, DDS, and you will see uh, almost 300 videos uh, and they have different languages. Um, thank you very much.